So 2,000 years ago, Ovid said, omnia mutantur, omnia fluunt, quod fuimus od sumus, cras non erimus. Change happens. And I think that if Ovid were to walk in here today, he would fit right into this crowd. We've been talking about change. We've been talking about the changes that are happening to our profession. And those changes have placed an emphasis in being able to deliver practice-ready or practice-aware attorneys upon graduation. Those changes have re-energized the way that legal education is being provided, have led to a focus on experiential learning, and have, has definitely led to uh, an even increased emphasis on clinical education. So today, I'm going to be talking about an embedding program. And what's an embedding program? An embedding program simply is a way that we can maximize the synergy of experiential learning that takes place in the clinical environment with the delivery of legal research instruction by means of a collaboration in a teaching or instructional team that, it, that comprises librarians and clinicians. The pedagogical theory behind an embedding program is that in the clinical environment, students are presented with factual, actual legal situations. They're not hypos, they're real things. And we can use those situations as a pedagogical tool to deliver legal research instruction at the point of need. In English, that means that we can just hitch our little red legal research wagon to the rising star of clinical education. <laughs> so this morning, uh, you heard Paul Callister speaking about metacognition. And I see Paul back there. And Paul has developed a taxonomy of educational objectives as an aid to teaching and assessing learning in legal research that leads to the, leads and embodies the lawyering skills and the master strategies that are necessary to become practice-ready attorneys or competent researchers. Paul's taxonomy simply tracks progress from the basic level of factual knowledge and thought to the more complex conceptual, procedural, and metacognitive synthesis and analysis that leads to developing that mastery, that leads to developing the practice ready and the competent researcher. So let's talk about the nuts and bolts of how to actually do this. Um, and I'm going to talk about the experience that I had while I was at UDC developing this program. And what we did there is that uh, Helen Fraser, who at the time was the associate uh, director of the law library, and I worked very closely with Joe Tolman, the clinical director to create uh, an embedded program that would embed one experienced librarian in the juvenile and special education clinic that Joe was, headed, was heading at the time as a pilot, as a testing program. And so we began by having Helen and Joe create a combined syllabus um, that included a requirement that students meet with Helen on a regular basis to discuss the progress in their research. Um, we had both of them listed as co-instructors in the syllabus, and we had Helen create materials for the students that focused on the techniques and the challenges on conducting legal research in the specialized field of juvenile and special education law. Now one of the very first things um, that we discovered uh, was that without a formalized 
instructional role for the librarian in that program. The students did not see her contribution as that of an information expert. They just rather thought of it as the librarian, as a teaching assistant. So we wanted to dispel that misconception. And to do that, we, we thought the best way was to provide a regular pedagogical interaction between the students and the librarian by creating a research workshop that was uh, conducted at the beginning of the semester by the librarian and that was required of all students where the students could have that interaction with the librarian and they couldn't avoid it. So in those workshops, we cover um, issues like how to, how to create a research plan on, a, on an individualized area of law, how to conduct research in a completely unfamiliar area of law, and how to uh, conduct effective research in regards to, to time and costs. Another discovery that we made very early on also was that without student buy-in, the program couldn't succeed. So to get that buy-in, we thought that the best way was to create even more of those pedagogical interactions with the students, to get the librarians and the students to work together in, in coordination with the clinician. And to do that, we had those meetings that were required where the students would come in and discuss the research plan with the librarian, um, discuss any issues that they had, and the librarian could provide them with help or assistance as was needed. So as the semester unwound, we were able to see that the students did gain an appreciation for that experience and that interaction with the librarian because they began to come to the librarian, they began to come to Helen on a regular basis beyond the number of required meetings. Uh, and as a matter of fact, some of those students even came back after the clinical experience was over to continue that pedagogical interaction. There was a, a little disturbing thing that we found and it was that most students came to the research process at the very basic level of knowledge. They did not see the process as a, as a holistic thing that happened. They saw it as a series of amorphous, shapeless, individualized, completely unrelated steps. So, with that insight, Helen took the initiative to structure her instruction using Paul's taxonomy as a guide to get the students to move from, the, to that, from that basic level to a metacognitive assessment of the process as a whole. She used her instruction and targeted it to lead them to those higher order thinking skills and those master strategies that they needed to become competent researchers. An embedding program is really a great way to maximize that synergy of learning that happens in the clinic. It's really a great way to get legal research instruction to be actually lively and not can, not a pre-manufacture process, but it does have costs. In a place where there's a large clinical program or where the students are required to take clinic, like at UDC, every student is required to take clinic, or where the librarians teach first year legal research, the cost in staff and time may be prohibitive. Uh, we found that probably the best way to do that is to begin by having a test, a pilot program like we did, and then expand as requested by the clinical faculty. At UDC that was successful because the program expanded beyond the original pilot. It was adapted by other, by other clinical faculty. And we were also able to measure the, the difference in the research performance of students who had been involved in the program and those who hadn't. And we definitely found a marked improvement in that performance. So it turned out to be an asset not only for the clinics or the law school, but also for the students. Thank you so much for your attention.